Hey, first grade, welcome back to Reading Workshop Tips with Mrs. Lee. And Lindsay Lamacorn's back. She was gone last time. She had other plans while we were doing our reading lesson, but today she's back. And do you notice what she's wearing? That's right, she's wearing a mask. Have you seen people wearing masks outside? I have too. When I go for walks, I also wear a mask. Masks help to keep us safe and help to keep other people safe around us so that we don't spread germs when we're walking close to others or when we're out and about maybe going to the store. So Lindsay Lamacorn, we made her a mask too so she wouldn't feel left out. Today we're going to practice making inferences just like what we did on Tuesday. Do you remember what an inference is? That's right. When we make an inference, we're stopping and thinking about what we already know inside of our mind from our own experience or maybe something we've read before. Another fancy word for that is our schema. It's what we already know. Then we're combining our schema with evidence from the text, like actual words that are right there in the text that give us clues. And this helps us to make an inference. When we make an inference, the answer isn't always right there in the text but we use what we know combined with the clues to figure out the answer. So today we're gonna to read a new book and as we go, we're gonna pause along the way to make some inferences. Let's get started. Today we're gonna to read a book called Picture Day. Remember when we had Picture Day back at Brook Mattapan? Everybody looked so nice and we went outside and took pictures all together. That was such a special day. Well, in this story, it's Picture Day at a different school. As we read, we're gonna be stopping along the way to make some inferences. Here we go. Poppy's picture prep. Poppy smiled at herself in the mirror. She was trying on her new dress for picture day tomorrow. It looked perfect. It was important. Her picture would be in the yearbook forever. So now my first question for you is, how does Poppy feel? Now on this page, it doesn't tell us a feeling word right in the text. We have to make an inference. So let's use our schema first. What do you know that might help you to think about how she's feeling now? That's right. I'm thinking about how when I have tried on something new or I have something new to wear, I feel really proud and excited. And then I also now see words in the text that also help me to make that same inference. The words say she smiled at herself in the mirror and also that she thought her dress looked perfect. All of that text evidence combined with what I already know helps me to know that I think Poppy is feeling really excited and proud to wear her new dress for picture day. Let's keep reading. In the kitchen, Poppy took a cup of punch from her mom. Her mom said, be careful, don't spill it. Seconds later, Poppy spilled it down the front of her dress. Oh no. Poppy glanced down at the stain. She couldn't go to the picture day like this. I'll wash it, her mom said. Now get changed. We're going to the eye doctor. So let's make another inference. How do you think Poppy is feeling on this page? And how do you know? Go ahead and say out loud right now how you think she's feeling and why you think that. You can just whisper it into your hands. Go ahead. All right. Let's see if you got it right. So I'm thinking about what I already know in my mind. I'm thinking about the times when I've spilled something on something fancy that I'm wearing or one of my favorite things. And I know that Poppy, from the expression on her face, she looks upset. I also can tell from the words in the text, there are some big clues about how she feels. She says, she couldn't go to picture, or it says, she couldn't go to picture day like this. 
And so I know she's probably feeling very concerned because she doesn't want to go to picture day with this big stain on her dress. So yeah, if you said she was feeling worried or upset or concerned, all of those would be right. Maybe she's even feeling disappointed in herself because her mom said, don't spill it. But then she spilled that red juice all over her dress. So again, on this page, it never told us exactly what the feeling word is that describes how she's feeling, but we made an inference using what we already know in our own minds, our schema, along with evidence right from the text. Awesome job. Keep up the great work. This section is called Picture Framed. At Dr. Chen's office, Poppy worried about her dress. Oh, she is worried. We were right. Suddenly, she heard Dr. Chen say, we'll have your glasses ready tomorrow afternoon. Poppy hung her head. She didn't want glasses. At least she wouldn't have to wear them for picture day. And now on the next page, this section is called the big day. What do you think is happening on the big day? Yeah, I think so too. It's going to be picture day because we know she's been really looking forward to it. So that's probably the big day that they're talking about right here in this heading. The next morning, Poppy grabbed her dress from the laundry basket. Oh no, she cried. My dress shrank. She ran to get an older dress. Now, how do we think she's feeling on this page? And why do you think that? What clues in the text help you to know? Go ahead again and whisper it into your hands, just like you did before. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, I agree with you. So I know in my own schema that if I took something out of the laundry and it had shrunk and it didn't fit anymore, I would feel upset. I see words in the text that say, she says, oh no. So I know she's upset. And she also says, my dress shrank. And I'm also looking at the picture as a big clue. She doesn't just look worried. She actually looks very upset and frustrated, maybe even angry that her dress has shrunk and now she won't be able to wear it for picture day. Nice job. Let's keep reading. At least she had her necklace. As she put it on, something went snap. Beads from her broken necklace fell to the floor. What else could go wrong today? Poppy's mom called upstairs. Hurry, Dr. Chen's office just called. Your glasses are ready. On this page, I would say she's still looking very worried and concerned. She is not having a good day. Oh, I feel bad for her because I'm thinking in my own schema, my own experience, I'm thinking about those days when it feels like nothing is going right. And those can feel like really, really frustrating days. Well, let's see what happens on picture day. This section is called picture perfect. I think it's really time for picture day to start because I can see in the picture she's standing with her classmates. Picture perfect. Waiting with the other second graders, Poppy fussed with her glasses. She hoped her class's turn would never come. Hmm, now that's weird. She's been really looking forward to picture day. And now on this page it says, she hoped her class's turn would never come. That seems a little bit confusing. I wonder why she would say she hopes her class's turn would never come. What do you think? I want you to make an inference. Go ahead and whisper into your hands or just whisper quietly out loud why you think she is hoping that her class's turn never comes. I'm gonna tell Lindsay Lamacorn what I think. 
Go ahead and you say it to yourself too. Yeah, so I'm thinking back to some clues from earlier in the text and also thinking about how I might feel if I was Poppy. So I know she was really excited about picture day, but then she didn't get to wear her favorite blue dress and she was hoping she wouldn't have to wear her glasses, but then they were finished early. So then she had her glasses to wear for picture day. So she wasn't excited about her dress. She wasn't excited about her glasses. And now I'm putting myself in her shoes, like using my own schema, thinking about times where maybe I had to wear something I wasn't excited to wear. And now this makes sense. I think she's hoping her class's turn would never come because she doesn't really want to be in the class picture anymore with these changes to her outfit. If you thought the same thing, give yourself a pat on the back. That one was really tricky. Nice job. Let's keep going. Beside her, Raul complained. You're lucky your parents didn't make you get a haircut. At least you can still smile, Lee said. Lee had a few missing teeth. Rosa had a bandage across her nose. Evan's arm was in a cast. I guess we all have something we don't like about our looks, said Poppy. Or Poppy said, none of us is perfect, she added. Hmm, so Poppy's realizing something important now. You're up, second graders, the photographer called. Poppy thought about taking off her glasses. Then the photographer whispered, nice glasses. I can think of some first graders on our Brooke Mattapan team that have some really cool glasses too. Poppy saw her wink from behind her own red glasses. Poppy smiled and looked at her classmates. They couldn't take off a bad haircut or hide a broken arm. They all had their differences, she realized. That's what made them special. She left her glasses on. Cheese, the class called out. The photographer snapped the picture. Perfect, she said. Picture day hadn't gone the way Poppy had planned. It had gone even better. Oh, I love that ending to the story. Everybody looks so happy and proud of themselves, even though they don't look perfect. You guys did a great job making inferences in this book. I have one last challenge for you before we go. What do you think is a lesson that we could learn from this story? Because this story has a really important lesson and I know lots of you have been working on thinking carefully about lessons in your books and sharing those at the end of your retells. Take a moment and think about Hmm, what is the lesson we could learn from this story? Yeah, I'm thinking that too. I'm thinking a great lesson we could learn is that you don't have to look perfect in order to take a nice picture. And I'm thinking in my own schema about some of my very favorite pictures. Some of my very favorite pictures were pictures where everything wasn't perfect. Maybe I wasn't wearing the perfect thing. Maybe I even had a Band-Aid on my forehead. Maybe I had a spill or a stain on my shirt. Or maybe I wasn't smiling all the way. Or maybe one of my eyes was closed. But I'm actually thinking that I can think of some of my favorite pictures where I wasn't perfect. And we know that we're not perfect people. So we're not always gonna get to take a perfect picture, but it's still really special to take a picture with our friends, especially on picture day, because those pictures are memories that we get to keep forever. Did you put your class picture up somewhere in your house special? Now might be a good time to find that picture and you can take a look at all your friends. 
if you don't have that picture, maybe you can just close your eyes and think back to that day. and Think about all your Brook teammates on picture day, smiling and having fun together. All right. So as you're thinking about questions to your books, you should always be looking for text evidence, but sometimes you're going to need to make an inference where you're also going to have to combine those clues from the text with things you already know. I'm sure your teachers are going to be really impressed when you try that out in your conferences this week. Right now, I want you to go find some books or pull up some books on Epic. And just like at school, I want you to take some time to practice your reading strategies or whatever reading goals you're working on with your own books. Have fun reading, and I'll see you next week. Bye.